Uh, before I get started, I would like to say my thoughts and prayers continue to go out to the people who have suffered from the terrible tragedy of the Yarnell fire. I would also like to take the time to express my sincere thanks and appreciation to all the men and women working around the clock to protect lives and property across this country. In my short three years in Congress, I have represented nearly all of rural Arizona as a result of redistricting. Over that time, my constituents have, recurring, have become recurring victims of multiple wildfires each year. In my first year, the Wallow Fire, now the largest fire in Arizona history, ravaged 800 plus square miles of our treasured Ponderosa Pine country in just a few, few short weeks. Last year, over 900 fires charred over nearly 6,000 6, square miles in western states. Over 50,000 of those acres are in Arizona alone as a result of the Sunflower, Gladiator, Poco, Bullflat fires. And this year, our state was struck with the recent loss of 19 firefighters in the Yarnell Hill Fire. That fire was one of four fires to strike rural Arizona just so far in this fire season. Each of these fires has their unique circumstances. Some were by an act of God, some human caused, some were on federally administered land, others were a combination of federal, state, and private lands. Some are difficult to avoid and contain. The Yarnell Hill Fire, for example, was started by lightning and ravaged brush on state and private land in Yavapai County before extending into uh, public lands. Monsoon winds rapidly changed the direction of the fire, causing it to spread and change direction uncontrollably. But the fate of many of these fires can be changed. We can facilitate conditions that minimize the chance that they will start and reduce their size and intensity once they burn. Today I would like to briefly touch on the experience that I've had in my state and share what I believe Congress must do to address this crisis in rural communities. We, all, we owe it all to our brave men and women working in public safety, including our firefighters, who do everything they can to reduce the frequency and intensity of fires we send them into year after year. The conditions our public safety officials can and will succeed. Funding. Without a doubt, we need to ensure proper forest health and firefighting programs are adequately funded. The House has actually led in this fight, putting forth robust funding hazardous fuel reductions and other programs in our budgets, while the administration and the Senate, particularly in their 2014 budget, proposed cuts. But we have to do more than just spend money. We have to do it smarter. The current federal system continues to prioritize fighting fires. Although we need to suppress fires, it is never going to go away. We must show, shift to a proactive management of our public lands. If we don't, we're going to go bankrupt, both our federal and our local governments. We're going to lose natural treasures many of us hold dear, cause a rural way of life to go extinct, and imperil more of our public safety personnel. I would like to submit for the record um, Northern Arizona's Ecological Restoration Institute titled The Efficiency of Hazardous Fuel Treatments for the record. And it underscores this point. In short, it concludes that by proactively treating a significant portion of the Schultz Fire imprint with an investment of $15 million, we could have greatly reduced the cost of the Schultz Pass, Schultz Pass Fire and avoid the damage and loss of life associated with the fire and post-fire flooding that is now conservatively estimated between $133 and $147 million. In other words, it's 10 times more expensive to suppress and recover from a fire than it is to prevent it. In the wildfire, we spent millions to put it out and lost over $2.5 billion worth of assets. And this just, just talks about dollar signs. It's impossible to look at what the cost of the Mexican spotted owl nests that exist in the world. 20% were lost in that fire. Or even worse, how do we quantify the loss of 19 brave firefighters? We can't do that. But what we can do is prevent fires from implementing with common sense solutions and apply them. Congress must give our land management agencies the tools they need to reduce forest fires and fuels and restore the ecological at balance of our nation's national forests and grasslands. Two of the most important steps Congress could take is the extension of reform and end result of the stewardship contracting and the expansion of the policy known as the Good Neighbor Authority. The Good Neighbor Authority is a tool that allows the feds to partner with state foresters to treat our forests. Since 2000, Colorado uses, has used this for 40 projects. Utah used it to carry out 15 projects on 2,800 acres. The pilot study has been a success. It works. Expand it to all states. NEPA relief. The National Environmental Pol uh, Policy Act has become the third rail in natural resources. Anytime any member of Congress tries to amend the act or streamline it, the proposal becomes dead on arrival. But nearly every expert in the field will tell you that you have to cut red tape if we're going to seriously address our forest health. These are just a few major items I believe Congress must do um, to, to work. We can and we must do this together. 
Congress can focus on this issue, but the time is to work now. We must build some type of consensus and navigate some types of these solutions. I have my legislation, the Catastrophic Wildfire Prevention Act, which accomplishes many of these items. I have put forward today. So do many of the other members um, with their bills. What I'd like to leave is, it, let's figure out what we can all support and get it done. We have an obligation to provide relief to our rural communities. I want to remind people, no isn't an answer, particularly from the environmental communities. If not, there will be consequences. I look forward to hearing from the community and from the experts today, and I thank you for the opportunity to speak.